on today's episode of the Toy Chasers. When I was really super young in the, like the early 80s, I have faint memories of like speaking spells and crap like that. Stuff that clearly didn't help me. I think I'm gonna get this regardless of how much it costs because th th I, this thing is just so funny. Arr, I'm an humanoid. Arr. I don't think he's ac actually said that. I had this as a kid, totally forgot about it. And it's a very faint memory that I have. We're like, oh man, I can't get what I want. I'm always on the lookout for toys that I grew up with and would look, would, uh, God damn it all! Freaking just stupid, man. Yeah, if I had a time machine, I wouldn't go back and kill Hitler. I'd go back and find vintage game and games and toys really cheap. <laughs> So today it's just me and Melvor. We're gonna go toy chasing today, which means that we're gonna go to a store because it's kind of late in the day and flea markets are kind of like not open right now. He goes, you better get my order right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your license. <laughs> that was 96, yeah. That was, this is 96, yeah. <laughs> And so at this point, we decide to go to a, a toy store called DFW Vintage Toys. Uh, I heard they have a lot of toys here. This is a place actually that Billy and Jay had been to before. They went with 8-Bit uh, Eric and OK Chief and Alpha Omega Sin. I have been here before. That's how I heard that they have a lot of toys. So let's see what we can find. <laughs> So we're, we're kind of going out today uh, kind of handicapped because neither one of us really have a lot of money to spend. Um, Is that something that even needs to be stated? I mean, that's just a given at this point. Shut your face, chum. No, it's not. So much cool stuff, not enough money. That's what it boils down to. Because uh, I totally want a Devastator, like a complete Devastator. Hopefully, I'll find something that I really want that's in my price range that I actually have enough cash in my wallet for. If you if you see if you see literally anything Gremlins related, let me know. Why would I do that? That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Why would you do that? Okay, I'm I'm looking around through a lot of these bins and stuff, and and something that <laughs> that that actually just jumps out on me is this Three Stooges action figure, kind of like one of those little bendies, those cheap bendy dolls. I'm totally getting this right here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, That's great. He looks That's great. Creepy. Dude, that is awesome, man. Melvor finds this Larry figure that looks like. It's haunted. I'm just gonna be honest. This thing looks possessed as fuck. This can't cost that much, but it's freaking hilarious looking. I'm so getting this. We were just talking in the car. There's this picture I found online of uh, of Larry, and he had just woken up, and he's looking over in the, at, at the uh, little dresser thing beside him, and there's a skull, and he's all. Aah! It's like that type of comedy will never die. Who? doesn't like somebody getting slammed in the face with a hammer. I know I do. I freaking love the Three Stooges, man. Like my favorite part of any episode ever is when, when Mo freaking falls into this like, this vat of, of like rubber cement or something. And the other Stooges actually plug up some helium or something. So he starts flying up into the air and floating around. And the only sensible solution at that point to the other Stooges is to shoot him down with a shotgun. <laughs> of the Joes that I had as a kid. One of the ones that I'm actually missing is Spirit. Um, and he was always one of my favorites, actually. And I see this. I see this right here. And I'm like, oh, nice, Spirit. Dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> Spirit's having a bad day. Spirit is in several pieces. He plum fell apart. Actually, actually somebody could fix that pretty easily. Actually, sure. that's, it's just a rubber yes, band. No, it's no ring. 
you know those, who, those everybody there's there's a hundred videos on YouTube that show how to do that now because the, the rubber rots out mm -hmm. I mean you can't help it Billy's a freaking idiot Billy's also very lazy so you get a lazy idiot and instead of getting a figure for for what he could he's probably not going to spend more than a dollar on this on this figure um a no ring doesn't cost hardly anything heck i got a buddy jason brown could fix it for free probably has a bunch of o-rings just laying around does he get it though does he take advantage of that i'll put that on my, on my maybe paul we all know that i'm too f***ing lazy to put this damn thing together again <laughs> So I'm actually enjoying myself in this place. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff to look at. Um, there's several things that I'm kind of interested in. I actually think I might get this because this is definitely one of the best Yoda sculpts, even to this day. Like that last Black Series Yoda that they came out with was a freaking joke. He looks stupid, man. So the Power of the Force 2 line that came out in the mid 90s is, is really the first Star Wars figures that we'd had in, in, in about a decade. I don't have a lot of, I don't have any nostalgia or fond memories of Power of the Force line. This line actually gets a, a lot of flack uh, because some of the some of the proportions are a little uh, ridiculous. Luke didn't look like that. But you know, there was a lot of good stuff that actually came out of this line. There was also uh, a lot of figures that, you know, we're probably never ever gonna see an action figure for again. <laughs> Apart from like the, the original Kenner Yoda, this is actually one of my favorite sculpts of Yoda. And one of the great things about this line is it's dirt cheap. This is what, 99? Um, and this looks better than what they're coming out with now. Hasbro needs to get their act together. Damn Hasbro, you've been told! <laughs> Every time I walk into this place, there's a bunch of stuff that I know I have to have. Where's Chunk? There's Chunk. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, they got sloth too. It's almost like a challenge, you know, going into a place like this with just a few bucks and seeing if you can't come up with anything decent. We're doing a lot of window shopping right now, actually. Gee, I don't home. I'm pretty sure I had this. I have gone the last 30 plus years of my life completely f oblivious to this thing existing. Because I had this as a kid, totally forgot about it. You're gonna have a sleepover at Jay's? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a sleepover. It ended up going into my backyard and getting destroyed maybe like a week or two later, whether it was from like a storm or, or we did it because we were snot-nosed jerk-offs. This is actually kind of neat. It's stuff like this that I'm actually looking for as well. Um, you know, that random crap you had as a kid that even though it wasn't an actual physical toy, it was related to your favorite franchise and cartoon and toy lines and stuff, you know, like He-Man toothbrushes or like a Transformers door chime. How much you ask it on the tent? This is obviously something that there's not a lot of because I've never seen it um, in anywhere. I have no idea what something like this would cost. Never run across anything like this, even from other toy lines. Something like this can't be cheap. It looks like it'd be like $89.99, like 90 bucks basically. Okay. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Oh. This guy got bad news, but I was kind of prepared for it. It's kind of a shame too, you know, because this is something that he hadn't seen or thought of since he was a kid, and just seeing it, it kind of just like awoke in those memories. So I'm actually happy. I found a couple of things that didn't cost a lot of money. I think both these things, I, you know, it was, it was like 10 bucks, you know? So um, I'm actually coming out of here with some cool stuff that I actually like. So it's a win in my book. It's also a win in my book that Billy didn't get anything. It's uh, Melville One and, and Billy Zero. Who says you gotta go into a toy store and actually walk out with items? It helps, it makes things a little easier, you know, when you're trying to make a show um, where the whole point of it is that you're, you're buying things. I decided not to get anything today because I have an electric bill to pay and I need lights.
That's actually the real reason. <laughs> Let's have a show about getting stuff and then not get stuff. I probably could have gotten the spirit for $2 and just had somebody fix it for me. I should have done that actually. Son of a bitch. So, we're using your cell phone now for a dash cam because you can't remember the camera when we're going out filming. Is that right? No, I remember the camera, just not the GoPro. Which is a camera. Dude, man, I, I swear, I don't see how we've made as many episodes of, as we have. <laughs> if, it's, if it's not one thing, it's another. It's the batteries or, or something else happens. This is ridiculous. It's the way game chasing go. Isn't this going to be a toy chasers? That's the way toy chasing go. That's the way toy chasers go. Ridiculous. Uh, I don't need everything. Sometimes I just wanna enjoy a toy that I remembered for a little bit, put it back up on the shelf, and then walk out. Oh, I should've gotten that Mamba. Damn. I should've put it on my credit card. I should've put it on my, I mean, cause my credit's fucked anyway, because of, because of the student loans, I mean, so who cares? You know, you come out with a couple of things, a couple of weapons or so, it's a win in my book. And, and that's exactly what this is. Uh, for me anyways, Billy, Billy's a freaking loser because Billy didn't get anything. Yeah, that makes me a loser. Not all the other stuff, that is what makes me a loser. That's, that's what makes you a loser. When you could, could have gotten one of the Joes, one of the last Joes you need for maybe a freaking buck, you know, and spend like 50 cents to repair the thing and you don't want to do it because you're lazy and you're dumb. Peace out.